The movie begins with the chaos of World War II as Allied forces storm the beaches of Normandy on D-Day. Amidst the deafening roar of gunfire and explosions, we follow a group of American soldiers as they struggle to make their way across the beach under heavy enemy fire. The narrator describes the significance of the mission ahead, the capture of Hill 400, a German stronghold in the Hürtgen Forest near the Belgian border. Detailing the strategic importance of Hill 400, the narrator explains how its vantage point allows the Germans to monitor Allied movements and launch devastating counterattacks. The dense terrain, fortified with barbed wire and mines, poses a formidable challenge to American forces attempting to advance through the area. Despite numerous failed attempts to seize control of Hill 400, the narrator emphasizes the necessity of a new approach. General Walter Weaver's request for assistance from the 2nd Ranger Battalion, renowned for their bravery and success at Omaha Beach and Point du Hoc, underscores the gravity of the situation. If anyone can achieve the seemingly impossible task of capturing Hill 400, it's these elite soldiers. General Weaver and General Cota were discussing the plans when Captain Masney and Lieutenant Lomel came into the room. General Weaver expresses the dire need for a breakthrough to relieve the soldiers, emphasizing the importance of capturing Hill 400 to gain control of the sector and allow for further advancement into Germany. The generals acknowledge the Rangers' past successes, particularly their heroic actions at Point de Hoc during the D-Day landings, and express their belief that the Rangers are the last best chance to break through and capture Hill 400. Despite the daunting task ahead, the Rangers show determination and readiness to take on the challenge. General Weaver explains the strategic significance of Hill 400, its height, and its commanding view over the sector. He warns the Rangers of the formidable opposition they will face. Crack veteran German troops armed with artillery, mortars and machine guns. The scene underscores the gravity of the mission and the immense pressure on the Rangers to succeed, as failure would jeopardize the entire Allied offensive. Despite the challenges and the fierce opposition they anticipate, the Rangers express their commitment to the mission and their confidence in their abilities. The soldiers of the 2nd Battalion find themselves lost in the dense forest while searching for the 2nd Battalion of the 112th Infantry. Amidst their banter and concerns about their whereabouts, they suddenly come under enemy fire, forcing them to quickly take cover and defend themselves. After successfully defending themselves, the soldiers encounter a man approaching and exchange identification codes. The man reveals himself to be from the 112th Infantry, the unit the soldiers were searching for. They inform him that they are from the Ranger's 2nd Battalion and were supposed to meet up with his unit. In this scene, Lieutenant Lomel and Sergeant Williams, using binoculars, discuss their proximity to their objective, a gunner's nest at the base of the hill. They debate the risks of crossing the open field versus navigating the minefields on either side. As they strategize, they notice Anderson taking pictures, which distracts them. The lieutenant reprimands Anderson for jeopardizing their position for a photo, emphasizing the seriousness of their situation. Despite the tension, Anderson shares a photo he took, which receives a compliment from Sergeant William. The soldiers face an attack marked by artillery explosions. Amidst the chaos, they scramble for cover and urgently try to navigate the dangerous situation. There's confusion and concern as the soldiers realize their own artillery is firing too close, risking friendly fire casualties. They desperately try to communicate with the artillery to adjust their aim away from their position. The tension mounts as they face incoming fire from German mortars, feeling trapped and vulnerable in the forest. The soldiers attempt to redirect the artillery fire towards the German mortar crews, but struggle to do so. Suddenly, Sergeant William got shot but they finally managed to defeat the attackers. Captain Masney and Lieutenant Lomel discuss their current location, which appears to be Harshelt. Despite the apparent peacefulness of the surroundings, there is a sense of caution, with Lomel expressing concern about the tranquility feeling too staged. They decided to check it out, and they all went inside. Captain Masney and Lieutenant Lomel execute a surprise attack on two German soldiers from behind. Meanwhile, Red and Private Petty inadvertently stumble upon German soldiers while sneaking around. A skirmish ensues with the soldiers engaging in a firefight. Despite the initial surprise, Red and Petty successfully defend themselves, ultimately eliminating all the enemy soldiers. The rest of the soldiers also managed to overcome the enemy forces. They got out of there and went into the forest. As they ventured further into the forest, the soldiers encountered another group of German soldiers, leading to a fierce exchange of gunfire. Despite being outnumbered, the soldiers prevailed over the enemy once again. Lieutenant Lomel updates Captain Masney on their losses. Twelve soldiers dead and thirty-four wounded. They went 
to the hills and faced enemy fire. As they reach the top, Lieutenant Lomel takes charge and gives instructions to his team. He assigns roles to each soldier, directing them to different approaches to minimize their exposure to enemy fire. Lomel emphasizes the importance of coordination and communication, instructing his team to watch for his signal before opening fire and to cease fire immediately after he throws a smoke grenade. They started executing their plan, and they successfully took over the hill. Lieutenant Lomel informs General Weaver that they have successfully taken the hill. General Weaver expresses his confidence in their ability to accomplish the mission. Lomel remarks on the toll the battle has taken on his men, but emphasizes their resilience. However, he acknowledges the challenge of securing the vast area of the hill with their limited resources. General Weaver informs Lamel that reinforcements won't be available until morning and encourages him to start working on a plan to hold the hill. General Weaver hung up the phone and turned to General Coda. General Weaver expressed concern about the lack of expected resistance faced by the 109th and emphasized the need for support to hold the hill. However, General Coda informs him that reinforcements are not available due to the presence of a German armored battalion north of Harschelt. General Weaver argues that the German armor won't be able to penetrate the dense woods any more than American armor can. On the hill, Captain Masny asked Lieutenant Lomel about his phone conversation. Lomel informs Masny that reinforcements won't arrive until tomorrow, despite their successful capture of Hill 400. Lomel explains that the Germans will likely regroup and launch counterattacks, outnumbering their forces. He outlines their defensive strategy, including sending out scouting parties to identify enemy movements and concentrating fire on counterattacks. Despite the daunting odds, they rely rely on the support of artillery and quick alert soldiers to improve their chances of survival. Masny suggests they might have a 50% chance of surviving the evening if everything goes according to plan. As Lomel and Masny scan the area, they discuss the ETA for reinforcements. Masny expresses frustration with the plan, to which Lomel reflects on the nature of planning in wartime, noting that plans often become irrelevant once the fighting begins. Their conversation shifts to personal backgrounds, with Lomel revealing his family's involvement in the luxury home furnishings business in Chicago and his decision to enlist in the military after his father's death. After their conversation, they went back to the other soldiers. Lamel directs the soldiers to end their break and resume their duties. He specifically calls upon Kettlehut and Anderson to accompany him while instructing the others to follow the orders from Sonny. As the soldiers scanned the hill for German soldiers, Lieutenant Lomel encountered two enemy soldiers and engaged them, resulting in their demise. Meanwhile, Red found himself in a close encounter with a German soldier, managing to defend himself by by striking the enemy with the butt of his gun. Despite the soldier's attempts to overpower him, Red fought back fiercely, resorting to using the back of his gun as a weapon. Captain Masny intervened, stopping Red from further assaulting the enemy soldier. As the soldiers searched the bodies of the fallen German soldiers, Private Petty made a significant discovery, a map. Recognizing the importance of this find, the soldiers cheered in celebration. Lomel, Kettlehut, and Anderson make their way to the bell tower, where Anderson begins taking pictures despite Lomel's warning not to obstruct their mission. Upon reaching the tower, they observe wounded soldiers being tended to by nurses. Lomel approaches one of the nurses and informs her that they need to use the bell tower. The nurse expresses frustration at the intrusion, lamenting the loss of her peaceful life on her father's farm to the horrors of war. She accuses the soldiers of potentially torturing her patients for information, but Lomel reassures her that they are now prisoners. In the bell tower, Lomel lays out their strategy, emphasizing the need to intercept the German advances early to stand a chance of surviving the night. He directs Kettlehut and Anderson to a vantage point where they can observe and report enemy movements. Meanwhile, he instructs the others to fortify their position behind the pillbox, providing them with a fallback option if the situation becomes overwhelming. Lomel plans to contact headquarters to request additional reinforcements. Lomel called General Weaver. Lomel relays important intelligence to General Weaver about the German attack, informing him that two regiments are launching an assault from the east. Lomel expresses concern about their limited manpower, with many soldiers either wounded or deceased. General Weaver acknowledges the gravity of the situation, but regrets that he cannot commit any more men at that moment. He assures Lomel that if the situation changes, he will be informed immediately. After hearing the conversation, General Coda confronted General Weaver. Coda highlights the changing circumstances, emphasizing the vulnerability of Hill 400 in the forest. He argues for additional support for the Rangers, citing their past successes and the critical importance of holding the hill to prevent a German counteroffensive. However, General Weaver expresses reluctance, citing the risks of reinforcing any point along the front and the need to protect all units under his command. Despite Coda's appeals, Weaver remains firm in his decision not to allocate more resources 
forces to Hill 400 until the following. As Kettlehood and Anderson maintain their vigilance, Anderson shares that he fought in the First World War and experienced loss. Their conversation halts abruptly when they spot approaching German soldiers and notify the others. Meanwhile, General Coda receives a call regarding the situation at Call, where the 13th Division has pinned down a German division, effectively blocking their movement. Recognizing the opportunity to reinforce Hill 400, Coda emphasizes the importance of seizing such chances to take the fight to the enemy. However, General Weaver expresses hesitation, citing the lack of reserves and the intense German resistance faced by the Rangers on Hill 400. He acknowledges the dire consequences if the hill falls, as it would expose every Allied position to German artillery. Despite his initial reluctance, Weaver ultimately agrees with Coda's assessment and decides to take action. Acknowledging the urgency of the situation, he resolves to contact the 13th Division and request reinforcements for Hill 400, recognizing the critical importance of bolstering the Rangers' position. On Hill 400, the soldiers continue to retaliate against the enemy force. Despite facing overwhelming odds, they launch a successful counterattack, pushing back the enemy. Lomel calls General Weaver and urgently requests reinforcements for Hill 400, stressing the dire situation. Weaver assures him that elements of the 12th Infantry are en route and promises to expedite their arrival, even if it means personally ensuring their deployment. Lomel pledges to hold off the enemy until reinforcements arrive. As they celebrated their temporary victory, Private Petty revealed he had been shot. Red cried while holding his body, but Captain Masani told him they had to go now. He promised they would come back for the body as they hastily departed from the scene. Lomel, scanning the area, is caught off guard as a German soldier approaches from behind, wielding a knife at his throat. They engage in a fierce struggle, but just as the German soldier is about to strike, Anderson intervenes, hitting the soldier from behind. The soldier falls, allowing Lomel and Anderson to escape. However, the soldier rises again, aiming his weapon at them, but the nurse, Ursula, shoots him. As the soldiers continued to fight, Red was shot, adding to the urgency of their situation. Lomel reassured them that reinforcements were on the way. Captain Masseni approached Lomel and suggested leveraging the wounded German soldiers. However, Lomel dismissed the idea, emphasizing the need to to buy time until reinforcements arrived. Lamel approached Ursula, asking for an exit out back. Ursula informed him of two exits on the opposite side. Lamel requested a steady stream of fire from his comrades to keep the Germans at bay for five minutes. He instructed those who could walk to do so and to carry the rest. He then called for immediate movement of all patients. A German official arrived calling for a ceasefire and urging the Americans to surrender, claiming they were out of ammunition and offering assurances of honorable treatment according to the Geneva Convention. When they received no response, the Germans entered the bell tower, only to find it empty except for a map on the floor. Realizing it was a trap, the official screamed a warning, but it was too late. Lamel gave orders and the place exploded, catching the Germans off guard. Outside, Lamel apologized to Ursula for blowing up her hospital. She reassured him, saying it wasn't the first time, and jokingly mentioned her tendency tendency to work in hospitals that end up exploding. Before parting ways, Lomel asked for her name, and Ursula kissed him on the cheeks, introducing herself as Ursula. Lomel and Masseni met with Generals Kota and Weaver, who acknowledged the reinforcement's arrival. General Kota praised their work, emphasizing the need for rest. He hinted at the goal of taking Berlin by Christmas and expressed gratitude for their efforts. Lomel accepted the acknowledgement, and they exchanged farewells. The movie concludes with a note stating that some soldiers didn't make it home for Christmas because Germany wouldn't surrender until May the following year. Despite this, victory had come.